Please hold your line. 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 Look at the stars at night. Be thankful. Take a breath. Believe in yourself. Be thankful for what you have. The meal that you have on your table. The roof that you have over your head. And take time to be informed by tuning into the mediator. Whew, that sounds like an excellent, excellent plan. Whew. Let's get to it. Story number one, science and religion are still debating about fundamental issues. This is becoming a big, uh, big story. That's why it made its top, the, the top eight this week. Law, the sanctity of life, marriage, human behavior, and even life after death are just some, some central issues still being debated in the religious and scientific arena. Some people believe and some people don't. Now, there have been a lot of people who have explained a supernatural experience when they were on the brink of death. Now, some people reported seeing a white light. Some people have even reported feeling at complete peace while being ushered into heaven by God himself. Now, this is uh, there is a uh, cosmologist. Uh, his name is Dr. Sean uh uh carol he thinks that this is uh the, the, that that there's no physical uh what they say there's no physical possibility that this could be possible now he's a physicist uh, he's a professor at california institute of technology he believes that light after death is physically impossible the article is the article in unilad is maybe about a page long and just gets straight to the point when it comes to humans uh believing in the afterlife so this doctor is basically saying it's physically impossible, uh, but some people are holding on to these stories, and they're, they're almost there's probably a lot of people who have had life or death experience who can go to bat and say that there is something happening on the other side. But what makes this article important and why I made it in is because of the fact that law, the sanctity of life, and marriage and human behavior. All, and even life after death all have a lot to do with how people govern themselves in present time. And a lot of people are not happy because a lot of children are growing up not not working on that conscience, making conscious decisions. And that's why story number one made it in this week. Very, very interesting story. Story number two. Landlords already had it rough. But COVID-19 may have pushed some landlords to their tipping point by making it even harder. One Vice article reports on how one landlord in Albany, New York, was so fed up with his eviction morator with the eviction moratoriums that he took matters into his own hands and abducted his two sleeping tenants and left them out in the cold at an empty cemetery. He zip tied them, according to the report. Now, the 40 year old landlord, uh, Sean Douglas, is uh, is now being charged with second degree kidnapping. So it may have he his decision may have made his his circumstances even worse. And he wanted to take action to his own hand. Now, this article really points out the frustration and problems that brought on by COVID-19 uh, that from the landlord's perspective. So landlords are going through hell trying to maintain their property. Story number three. Countries have been going through extreme measures to stop terrorism. But why? After being accused of genocide against the Uyghur people, uh, China went on defense and said such measures at their facilities in Yingzhuang uh, are being used to prevent terrorism. So they're saying they had to do this, take these measures to prevent terrorism. Close to 2 million Uyghur people and other Muslims, minority groups, are believed to have been facing sexual abuse and have been also forcefully st sterilized at these facilities. 
That's a lot. They're saying that they're committing genocide. Now, the United States has also been in headline discussion measures taken against terrorism suspects at Guantanamo Bay, which adds a lot of weight to story number three and gives you the sense of why it made it in this week. Big, big headline. Big, big developing news story. Story number four. Is the world safer now compared to 40 to 50 years ago? Vice reports that body parts are washing up on Benefentura's Columbia's port city shores. Now, the report is very graphic word-wise when describing the state of violence that the port city is in. According to the report, people are dying daily while poverty and crime seems to be taking over the heart of city streets. Now, the UN is sounding the alarm as streets have become militarized with armed gunmen. One key talking point mentioned in the article is that the people seem to have little faith or confidence in the guards put in place by the government and the UN. The story is still developing. Another headline, a lot of nonprofits and inner city black owned groups have been voicing their concerns while under the Black Lives Matter umbrella. Now, when asked if Black Lives Matter has made their cases their uh, cases and calls safer, according to some reports, many say no. Black Lives Matter has done nothing for them. Uh, this is not good. Another headline, nuclear weapons tested in Africa by France uh, way back in about 1960 are reported to be still in the air, the, the radioactive material. And they're saying that strong winds have carried the radioactive dust all the way up to France. Now, the dust is reported to be harmless, but still puts attention on the threats that radioactive material poses in present time. Asking the question at the end of story number four is, is the world safer now compared to 40 to 50 years ago? Well, those are our top four international headlines and developing news stories that I made in this week. I'll be right back with the top, top four. So don't go anywhere. You're in the media with me, Brian West. I'll be right back. If you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number eight, I-N-C.com. Method88.com, you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. Welcome back, welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. So let's waste no time, folks. Let's enjoy the moment. Reading the stories that impact our day-to-day -day lives. Let's enjoy this time that we have together. Break bread and be thankful for the many blessings of stories that can impact our lives. Let's bond. Let's enjoy the sounds and the tunes of mediation. Let's get to it. Story number five. A new voting qualification debate is brewing uh, due to recent political stirrups and a new wave of uninformed voters. New bills are being considered that will weigh heavily on voter qualifications. Uh, skeptics are comparing these bills to Jim Crow laws, while others feel that people shouldn't be allowed to vote if they are not in, un, if, they, if they are uninformed. So they're saying that people need to know what they're talking about at the polls before they place a vote for somebody who may not do the country that good. But that may be why we have the electoral college and a system put in place to make sure that the process is done right. Story number five taps in to the voting outer limits that we all may think we've got figured out. But at the end of the day, if we actually look at the both sides of the coin, we may notice that each side is different. I think you get the point. That's why Story Number 5 made it in this week. Let's come together, sing happy songs, and get it right. Story Number 6. Could a new grassroots movement be unfolding to get more people informed? America witnessed some very, very life-changing events unfold in the transition from Trump to Biden. This country saw racial events unfold and an insurrection at the White House. Everybody witnessed it on television. 
live television in some cases. Now, these events proved that America was not only divided but polarized because of these events. Now, academics watched asked questions and concluded with one very familiar answer. They realized that the bulk of America's problems stem from where people get their information from. Now, another headline that seeped in, black-owned nonprofits who thought they would receive some of the money that was raised by Black Lives Matter feel left out. Now, when asked if they had received any help from the $90 million that Black Lives Matter had raised, many said no. Uh, now, some also reported that they did not feel that the people in charge of the movement were actually informed enough about real black issues. They said that they're, they're saying information, understanding, awareness is a factor. Now, when asked about the donations, some reports say that people donated and didn't even know anything about the organization or its founders. Story number six, big, big headline. That's why I made it this week. Story number seven in the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made in this week. Step right up. There's news here. Something to find out. There's something to talk about. The climate change debate is becoming a serious issue and costing people jobs and money. Twelve states with Republican attorneys generals uh, plan to sue Joe Biden over his executive order aimed at climate change. Now, the argument is that the, ra the, uh, the radical stance on climate change could cost the U.S. hundreds of billions or even trillions of dollars in damage to the U.S. economy for decades to come. They also argue that jobs will be lost and that energy production will be stifled and and, uh, and it will be it will strangle America's energy independence plans. If there was a plan, it will also suppress agriculture, deter innovation, and impoverish working families. So they're saying that all of this stuff in Biden's stance on climate change could basically destroy the fabric of America. Is climate change really that bad? Is it really a big issue? That's why story number seven is so big, because the debate keeps going on and on. This story got bumped all the way up into the top two. Climate change just yesterday was almost fading out. You didn't hear anything about it. Now it's becoming a central issue because it's costing people jobs and money. Keep an eye on story number seven. That's why I made it in this week. Story number eight and the top international headline and developing news story that made it in this week. Another immigrant fight is brewing. This is big. A report in Axios projects a record 13,000 migrant kids will cross the U.S. border in May. It's a lot of children. One USA Today article headlines how Joe Biden plans to offer legal status to immigrants who fled the Maduro regime. Now, this is as many, they're saying that as many as 300,000 immigrants that under Joe Biden will be offer temporary legal protection under his watch. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of folks. Now, this story goes on to highlight Trump's stance against Nicolas Maduro uh, by implementing sanctions against the Venezuelan socialist government, how it affected what's happening in this whole story. Now, they're saying that a lot of Americans, uh, Republicans and Democrats and even legal citizens are not happy with this decision by the Biden administration due to the current conditions that the world is in while also dealing with COVID-19. Now, the argument in this brewing debate is that the current living conditions in Venezuela are just too harsh to live in for the immigrants already here to return. So that's that's what the big debate is about. They're basically saying that even they're here and there's no way for them to return because the living conditions are terrible. There's a lot happening in the political arena and the immigration fight, and that's why the story is at the top. Now, a deadly crash near the U.S.-Mexican border involving illegal immigrants that were paid around $10,000 to be smuggled made some headlines shining more light on the cost associated with smuggling in illegals. Story number eight is a big, big headline, and that's why it's just it's gaining steam, and that's why it's at the top because – uh, this is this could become a problem. You have to think where there's one plate for somebody who is illegal, there's less plate for somebody who's legal. 
So uh, when well, there's one doctor to care for somebody who is illegal, there's a less doctor for somebody who is legal. So that's why this is a big, big headline. The Department of Homeland Security is looking for volunteers to assist them at the southern border due to the overwhelming surge of migrant activity after the election of Joe Biden. This is big. Another headline, an Arizona sheriff blames politics for the border crisis. One report last week claims that Joe Biden has even considered sending migrant children to a Virginia military base. Story number eight, big, big headline. And that's why I made it at the top this week. The immigration debate is brewing and getting bigger and bigger. Well, those are our top eight headlines and developing news stories that I made it this week, international and local. I hope you got something out of today's program. I always get something out of doing the research. As usual, I'd like to thank all the news outlets, the media, the people on the front lines. You deserve all the credit. I'm just the man in the middle, the mediator. Uh, I'll go back, uh, like I, I'll go, I go through this every week to go through 200 or more stories just to keep you informed. So if you want to show some support and help out in the the job here that that I do, just to keep you informed, I make it easy navigating the news for you. All you have to do is visit the website on the screen. Buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor a program. Have a good week, everybody. Stay safe, think smart, make smart decisions, and care for those who care for you. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning to The Mediator with me, Brian West. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The